Take your Bible, if you would, please turn to Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. There was a story this week of a school teacher who cared not for himself and he cared for others. It doesn't take a Christian person to love his fellow man. Even lost people can do it. And President Trump was right in the sense that we ought to arm some of our teachers in our schools. Because they are the ones who love their students. If you know somebody who is a teacher, I guarantee you teachers during the course of that year, even the dumbest of the kids, they love. I know that for a fact because I was one of those kids. But this teacher, when a student went and retrieved a weapon, a gun, and came into the class, this happened this week, came into, this was in uh, north of Indianapolis. The student came back into the classroom and began firing that gun. From what I read, the teacher grabbed, I think it was a basketball or something like that, threw it at the gunman to distract him, and then immediately ran to him, swatted the gun away, receiving three fired shots into his body, swatted the gun away, jumped on the gunman and held him until help arrived. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that teacher ought to receive a Congressional Medal of Honor for being willing to sacrifice his own life he regarded not himself, but he loved and regarded the students in his classroom to the point that he was willing to lay down his own life if necessary. He would have, if possible, let this young punk fire all of his bullets into his body just because every bullet in his body is a bullet that's not in one of those students. To my knowledge, no one has died yet from that attack. There's one student in critical condition. They've had surgery. And uh, to those students, our prayers go out. But guys like that are the kind of guys that you see here. If you've never read or heard anything about the story of Iwo Jima, the United States Marines did not just land on this island and carry a flag up to the top of this hill and plant it there and said, we're in charge. The battle that they fought went on for days. And a lot of men, a lot of American men, lost their lives just so that picture could be taken. So those Marines could lift that flag up, and that was a sign. Even though there was fighting continued after that, that was a sign to the enemy. We've got this hill, and we're not backing down. And today, I want us to pay respect to those men, and for every war that our nation has ever fought. I, I saw a man yesterday... Um, at a store, and I wanted it, it by the time I, it occurred to me what was going on, um, he was already gone, but he was in the checkout line, and he had a military hat on, and 
he started walking off and I noticed, and he was, I'm going to say my age or, or younger. And as he walked off, I noticed that he had a prosthetic leg. And I got to thinking in my mind, I bet he lost that leg in the line of duty. And by the time it occurred to me, you know, what was going on, uh, he was already gone. I would have gone to him and asked him, did you lose that leg in the line of duty? And I was going to tell him, thank you, on behalf of a grateful nation. I think as Americans, we ought to be thankful. And we ought to take a day such as this to commemorate and, and memorialize the people who have fought and have died and gave their life as a sacrifice for our freedoms. I don't think we ought to take this lightly. Can I hear God's people say amen? Up on the screen is Navy SEAL, I spelled his name wrong, Robert, robbery, O'Neill. I was more concerned with getting his last name spelled right than I, than I didn't spell his first name. He is a member of SEAL Team 6. And he claims to have fired the shot to kill Osama bin Laden. He is an advocate now for the United States to release the photographs that they took of bin Laden's body. And I think they should. I think that ought to be all over the internet. Amen? Number one, it'll do away with some of the rumors that are out there that we never did kill him. Um, I wouldn't dare, uh, this guy here, I would not dare call him a liar to his face. I know that. Uh, but I think it would send a strong message out. This was done in the days of Obama, and Obama didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I think we ought to hurt their feelings. So I think we ought to release the photographs of the dead bin Laden. But Robert O'Neill is now a Fox News contributor. They call upon him to, to give commentary on certain things that are happening. And he released a statement yesterday that's called, Don't Wish Me a Happy Memorial Day. I'm going to read this to you because I know the screen... Uh, the script is uh, small, so I'm going to read this to you. And this is his words concerning Memorial Day. There's nothing happy about the loss of the brave men and women of our armed forces who died in combat defending America. Memorial Day is not a celebration. Memorial Day is a time for reflection, pause, remembrance, and thanksgiving for patriots who gave up their own lives to protect the lives and freedom of us all, including the freedom of generations long gone and generations yet unborn. We owe the fallen a debt so enormous that it can never be repaid. Memorial Day is a time to honor the lives of those who would rather die than take a knee when our national anthem is played. But they will fight and die for the rights of those who kneel. By the way, the NFL voted yesterday to ban that nonsense. They said any player that kneels during the playing of our national anthem is going to be hit with a fine. If they want to stay in the locker room, they can stay in the locker room. But if they're out on the field and our national anthem is played, they're going to stand in respect. Do you know the, one of the, I think the owner of the San Francisco 49ers abstained from that vote. He's an idiot. I hope his team loses for the next 30 years. Um, this holiday is a time to think of young lives cut short, of wives and husbands turned into widows and widowers, of children growing up without a father or mother, of parents burying their children. Memorial Day is a time to think of might-have-beens that never were, of brave Americans who put their country before themselves. Without these heroes, America would not be America. Unfortunately for many Americans, this solemn holiday might as well be called Summer Day, marking the unofficial start of the season of barbecues, days at the beach, time spent on baseball fields and golf courses, hiking and enjoying the great outdoors. All of those things are great. We all appreciate them, and they are some of the best things in life. But Memorial Day is not 
summer day. Nor was the holiday created as a way to promote sales of cars, furniture, or clothes, or beer. Another Memorial Day brings with it a whole lot more than the start of summer. Since last Memorial Day, grass is now growing above the final resting places of many young men and women whose lives were taken too soon while defending our country in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and other far-off places many Americans have rarely heard of. When Army Sergeant LaDavid Johnson, Staff Sergeant Brian Black, Sergeant First Class Jeremiah Johnson, and Staff Sergeant Dustin Wright were killed last October in an ISIS ambush in Niger, Many Americans asked, we have troops in Niger? These unknown soldiers lost their lives protecting you, every one of you reading these words. Think about this. Millions of high school seniors are walking across auditorium stages this season, receiving their diplomas. Most will go on to college or jobs, but some will choose a career of military service joining the second generation of American warriors fighting in the global war on terror, a war that began with September 11th, 2001, terrorist attacks that took the lives of almost 3,000 people in our homeland. Most of these new recruits, who were not even born or who were just infants when the 9-11 attacks that took place, will make it home just fine, but some will not. I pray that I'm wrong. But the sad truth is that the number of American war dead on Memorial Day in 2019 will be higher than it is on this Memorial Day. On Memorial Day, I salute my brothers and sisters in arms who have served beside me in war on terror. My heart especially goes out to the families of those who did not return home. In fact, I think about all those who served and those who have given their lives fighting for America from our country's earliest days in the Revolutionary War they all have my gratitude. We think we are strong. But in war, any of us can be turned into just a memory in an instant. And war seems to have been the universal experience of just about every society on the planet at one time or another for as long as there have been human societies. How do we stop the wars resulting in such tragic waste of lives? How do we stop the number of American war dead and war dead in other nations from growing? I wish I knew the answer. But battle lines are being drawn and redrawn. And wars and terrorist acts just keep on going on and on. Weapons are getting bigger. Bombs are becoming smarter. And more lives are being lost every day all over the world, leading to more death, more anger, and more war. Some are so loyal to their cause that they strap bombs on their bodies or fly passenger jets into buildings. They conduct beheadings. They set prisoners on fire. How do we find common ground with them? Do we even try to find common ground? Or do we finally take the gloves off and start landing punches intended to take our enemy out for good? I've been on over 400 army combat missions and have seen more war than most Americans. More than I care to remember, but cannot forget. There is never a shortage of war. War spreads faster than fire and like fire, it leaves destruction in its wake. It hurts my heart as an American every time I see another service member's body being brought home draped in an American flag. But it hurts my heart as a human being with every act of war we are all unleashing against each other around the world. This Memorial Day, I urge all Americans to remember all the fallen sailors, soldiers, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard members who have so bravely served our country as well as their families. And I urge all Americans to join me in the hope and prayer that somehow, someday, People around the world will focus more on our similarities than our differences and that we will move closer to a time when war is just a memory, part of our past, but not our future. There is a solution to that. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house 
shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Can I hear God's people say amen? I'd like for us to stand. And we're going to offer a moment of silence and then prayer. Thanking God for giving us soldiers, for giving us cops, firemen, rescuers, school teachers who take bullets so that those bullets don't go into their children, their students. And anybody who has given their life to save another's life, let's honor them by our reverence and by our prayers. Father, we come before you today and we are a thankful people. We thank you, Lord, for the honor of paying respect to the most respectable of Americans. Those who didn't wait to be drafted but signed up to go and defend. To sign up to go and aid another country that asked for our help. And for those that were drafted, that reported for duty because of duty. Father, we are thankful as a people, as Christians, who know the value of the sacrifice of one for the sake of others. Most of us, Lord, could not go and serve our country. Most of us, whether physically mentally or emotionally could not do what soldiers do. But we are thankful for those that could and those that did. From the Revolutionary War where our Declaration of Independence was signed by the men who realized that they may never see the liberty that they were proclaiming on that day. Through the various wars, War of 1812, the Alamo, Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Beirut, 
Gulf War I, Gulf War II, and on and on to this very moment, we owe a debt to the memory of men buried not only here at home, but on battlefields such as Flanders Fields and others all over the world. Men whose bodies will re never return to their homeland. And Father, we thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of brave men who go into burning buildings. Brave police officers who rush in harm's way to put down an armed gunman to remove the threat of violence and to take that off our streets. Highway patrolmen and ladies who in just the mere act of pulling someone over and doing their duty lost their lives. Father, we honor them and we thank you for them. We thank you for brave men in the Bible who stood to defend what was right. We thank you for David's mighty men, David himself. We thank you, Lord, for soldiers unnamed throughout the scriptures that gave their lives. And we thank you most for the captain of the armies of God, Jesus Christ, who on the day of battle, when the enemies rushed in, thinking that they were going to defeat God himself, Lord, you created the ambush of Calvary. And Jesus took our enemies and the things that were against us, and in his death, defeated them. And Father, we ask God that you fill our hearts and our minds with thanksgiving, with gratefulness, God. And the words of a soldier that was spoken today, that Memorial Day is not just a party day, but it should always be a day to remember those who paid the price for our freedom. Father, we thank you for soldiers. We thank you for good men. We thank you, Lord, for the blood, the price of freedom. We ask your blessings on our nation, upon our leaders. And Father, that Jesus Christ would come soon and relieve this world any more soldiers dying on a battlefield to put war away once and for all. May your kingdom come on this earth and do it soon. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for that. I think it's the right thing to do. Amen. Joshua chapter 5. Would you turn there please? Joshua chapter 5. <clears throat> verse 13 in Joshua 6 I'll give you the background in Joshua 6 Joshua is about ready to go march around Jericho God has already promised Joshua that the battle would be in his hand and in chapter 6 the children of Israel are about ready to go in and take possession. 